bettors reporting from the starting gate of the big cross-country skiing race, the finals of which will be held this afternoon between defending champion Slim Persky and young challenger Tina Turnstiles. And right now, we're going to talk with the official timekeeper of the race, Mr. Richard Relic of the Cyville Museum. Good morning, Mr. Relic. Good morning, Miss Bettis. Are we on? Yes. Oh, well, this is exciting. Yeah. Mr. Relic, what can you tell our viewers about the timekeeping system for this race? I understand it's time the same way it was 250 years ago. Oh, yes, it is. We use a pendulum. It swings back and forth, always at exactly the same rate, and that's how the race is timed. An official scorer, this year it's me, will start the pendulum swinging at the beginning of the race. And along with a couple of assistants, we'll count how many times it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth <coughs> and back and forth until the person crosses the finish line. Why don't we just use a stopwatch? Well, we want to preserve the history of the event. It's a bucket filled with sand. Yes, but this particular bucket dates back about 175 years. We only take it out of the museum once a year for this race. Thank you, Mr. Relic. You're welcome. Well, that's all for now. This is Jen Bettis saying we'll see you this afternoon for the big race. Hi, Jen. Hi, Mr. Relish. It's Relic. Yeah. Doug, did you just ski the entire race course? Oh, no. I came from my car. Hey, here comes Tina Turnstiles. Hi, Tina. Hi, Uncle Richard. Uncle? He's your uncle? Oh, no. Richard, I mean Mr. Relic, is an old friend of the family. He's not really my uncle, but he's like an uncle. I've known him since I was a kid. So, Richard, how long have you known Tina? Well, for the same period of time. Interesting. Are you Doug Savage, science court attorney? Who wants to know? Me. Oh, well, yeah, I am. Aren't you the honorary host for the race this afternoon? <laughs> That's right. So, the timekeeper is a really good friend of yours, huh? Yeah. Is that all right? <laughs> I guess. Well, see you all this afternoon. <laughs> Wow, a new record for Slim Persky, breaking his own record set a year ago. Challenger Tina Turnstiles really has her work cut out for her. Slim, how do you feel? Well, I'd like to thank all the little people. Excuse me, Slim, but isn't that a little premature? You didn't win yet. Yes, I know that, but uh, I love the little people. They're so, uh, little. No offense to the big people. Hmm, well, I'll be. Ready? Set? Huh? Go! <laughs> Tina Turnstiles, 501 swings! The new champion and a new record, Tina Turnstiles! Congratulations! How do you feel? Well, my arms are a little tired from holding the medal, but... I was talking to Tina. Uh, no, no, no. Tina didn't win. She cheated. What? I won. Tina cheated. I'm so disappointed in you, Tina. I didn't cheat. Slim's crazy. Now, I saw Richard Relic, close personal friend of Tina Turnstiles, add extra sand to the pendulum bucket to make it even heavier right before Tina's race. So? So if it's heavier, it goes slower. I'm so confused. Is this true? Well, yes, I did add more sand, but that doesn't change the way it swings. Of course it does. And I'm going to prove it in science court with my lawyer here because I'm the real winner. Now, where are the little people? Why do you ski with only one leg? Because I only have one leg. Oh, right. You mean since most skiers have two legs, why do I ski? Uh, yeah. Because I love it. But wasn't it hard to learn? Well, at first it was very hard, but I stuck with it. You see, Tim, I lost my leg when I was very young, so I had to learn to do a lot of things with one leg or not do them at all. Some things I can do and some things I can't. You are amazing, Tina. Uh, I mean, Miss Tina. You know what really helps? Other people's understanding. Wow. But Mr. Relic, 
You did add more sand to the bucket, so they took away Tina's medal. I don't care about the medal, Tim. I do care about my reputation as a decent person. Mr. Relic and I are not cheaters. Well, some sand did get knocked out of the bucket, and I'm sorry, but I don't know how exactly pendulums work, so I don't really know what happened. Well, I do know about pendulums, Mr. Relic, and I do know that you and Tina are not cheaters, and I'll prove it. Hi, Fred. Oh, hi, Judge Stone. What do you have there? It's my new watch. Boy, it's huge. It has a lot of features. It can tell me the temperature and the wind speed, and it could go into water, and it could go in outer space, and it could do anything. That's really something. So, what time is it? All right, wait, hold it. Mm-hmm, I gotta do this. Wait, 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 coming up. That time soon. All right, and I do this, and then this. You almost there? Almost. Be patient. Hold it. Uh, okay, it's 98.6 o'clock. Fred, that's your body temperature. It is? Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Wait, 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 I know. Coming up. I gotta, and then I with the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I gotta do. Fred, have you got the time? No, my fingers are sore. I have to rest. For how long? That's a good question. I got Fred, I'll see you inside. Oh, well, let me just... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Relic, isn't it true that you feel sorry for Tina because she only has one leg and that's why you cheated? No. No, you don't feel sorry for her? Or no, you didn't cheat? Both. I wish Tina hadn't lost her leg, but I don't feel sorry for her. She doesn't need pity. Actually, sometimes I envy her. Her courage, her strength. She is a tremendous person. Very nicely put, Mr. Relic. However, the fact remains that you were seen pouring extra sand into the pendulum bucket. I was pouring sand into the bucket because somebody spilled it. I really wasn't paying attention to how much I was putting in. Historically, we have filled the bucket up to the very top. It looks good that way. Mr. Relic, I think your story about the bucket is full of holes. Your Honor, I call Dr. Julie Bean to the bucket. I mean the stand. Dr. Bean, if I added sand to a bucket, would that make the bucket heavier? Yes. Now, please tell the court which would be heavier, a beach ball filled with 5 pounds of sand or a beach ball filled with 25 pounds of sand. A 25-pound beach ball, of course. And if I rolled the two balls, which ball would be harder to get rolling? Well, the heavier one, because it has more mass. Wow. Mass is the amount of stuff contained in something. Right. Thank you, Michaela. You're welcome, Doug. So, it makes sense that a bucket with more sand in it will also be harder to move. It will swing slower than a bucket with less sand. Not really. Oh. Well, let me just think out loud for a minute here. This isn't going so well. I wish I could think of something else. These socks are itchy. Mr. Savage, do we have to hear all your thoughts out loud? Oh, sorry. Uh, then, Your Honor. Given the circumstances of this case, the magnitude of the complexities, the seriousness of the consequences, and the amount of big words coming out of my mouth, I'd like to rest it. Your case or your mouth? Uh, my case? Fine. While Doug rests his case, let's take a break and review what's happening in the trial. Mr. Relic added sand to the bucket before Tina Turnstile skied her race, and she beat Slim Persky's new record. Slim Persky believes Tina cheated and that he should win the medal. But does the amount of sand in the bucket make any difference in the race results? Let's get to the science court lab so we can investigate pendulums for ourselves. I can see that you've already learned a lot about pendulums. Are you ready to hear Professor Parsons' explanation in the trial? Let's get back to the trial to hear what he has to say. Professor Parsons, could you please clear up some things about pendulums? Certainly, that's why I'm here. I'm the quicker, clearer upper. <laughs> Let's start with a movie, shall we? Oh. Folks, well, just roll it. Now, several hundred years ago, an Italian scientist named Galileo. Can you say Galileo? Galileo. That's good. One more time. Galileo. So, one day... Excuse me? <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, one day Galileo's in a cathedral, and he's looking up at this huge chandelier that's sort of swinging overhead. 
Now, he noticed that it always seemed to take the same amount of time to make one full swing, back and forth. So he went back to his laboratory and... And created a monster? <laughs> <laughs> no, my bizarre little friend. He discovered an amazing thing about the pendulum. I'll show you. Galileo discovered that no matter how much weight, or mass, you add to a pendulum, it will always swing at the same rate. Ooh. Hey, you're right! Of course I'm right. You think I make this stuff up? Professor, do all pendulums swing at the same rate? Oh, absolutely not, no. The key to remember about a pendulum is that the only thing that makes a pendulum cycle go faster or slower is the length of the string you use to hang it with. If I add to the length of the string on this pendulum, it takes much longer for it to swing back and forth. So it's not the weight that matters, it's the length of the pendulum. Your Honor, I'm ready for closing arguments. Mr. Savage? Do we have to? Afraid so. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, boy, it's been a long day, huh? Fred, what time is it? Here or in Finland? <laughs> <laughs> Finland. <laughs> Funny guy. So, in conclusion, Richard Relic and Tina Turnstiles are guilty of cheating. Thank you. That's all you want to say? Tina and Richard. Oh, I almost forgot. That guy Galileo. He's guilty, too. Thank you. Galileo! Mmm. Good to see you were paying attention. Miss Krempel? Thank you. Good people of the jury, Tina Turnstiles deserves her gold medal because she beat Slim Persky fair and square. Richard Relic wasn't cheating when he added sand to the old pendulum because, as we saw, adding weight to a pendulum isn't what changes its rate. Now, if Richard had changed the length of the pendulum, that would have changed everything. Back and forth takes just as long, no matter what it weighs. But change the length and swinging could be seconds or it could be days. And four takes just as long, no matter what it weighs. But change the length and so winging, could be seconds or it could be days. Well, you've heard the evidence. Now it's time to make a prediction. Is Tina Turnstiles guilty of cheating or is she innocent? Let's hear what you think. Here comes the jury with their verdict. I wonder what they've decided. Let's listen and find out. The jury reached a verdict in record time, I think. Here we go. I'm pushing, I'm clicking, you're waiting, be patient. Now wait, I do this, wait, 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 I'll give you uh, it's not working, you speak. We, the jury, find Tina Turnstiles not guilty of cheating. When Richard added sand to the pendulum bucket, he did not change the way it kept time. We hereby reinstate the gold medal to Tina Turnstiles. Boy, just when I thought we weren't going to lose that badly. It's okay. Tina deserves it. I was wrong. That's right, you were. Wow, you're good. Now if you'll excuse me. Oh, congratulations, Tina. Mr. Savage, are you crying? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm being a baby. Well, crying's not a sign of being a baby. Oh, well, what about playing with plastic multicolored stacking cups? Okay, you're pushing it, Doug. Well, that's all from the Science Court courtroom. I hope you'll join us in the lab for another fascinating experiment about pendulums. You've done a great job investigating pendulums. I hope you'll join us soon for another Science Court exploration. And until next time, remember, science is the law and scientific thinking rules. <laughs> <laughs>